Let's talk about one trick that professional composers use in their music all the time. It is a very simple concept based on one idea, which is music is like an onion. <laughs> I'm being serious though. Like what's the one thing that we all know about onions? Well, it's that they have many, many layers. For example, check out this track that I brought. It's original. There's a passage I want to hear. why this sounds like this is because it's layered like a freaking onion and i want to talk about specifically that final passage with that upheaval of notes to put it simply what's going on is that we have an e power chord over b and then it's followed by a major b chord so it sounds like this on piano it's a very uplifting sound when you put it in the context of the uh, dark orchestration that came before that break is supposed to give you courage and that's how it sounds like now if we were a beginner composer want to do something like that on brass we'd open a french horn patch from metropolis arc one put the very same notes on the brass using the sustain articulation we'll get something like this which is fine but you know could be better the next step to make this a bit more proper would be to layer it so we're gonna have the bass trombones playing that on a lower octave maybe like this you know now it's more thick and why not let's add some trumpets to play on a regular octave so when you put all together because of the different octaves we're reaching in different frequencies this now sounds a bit higher definition and more thick but if we place it under the percussion on the track in a moment it sounds like this i mean it's fine but it's kind of weak i think we need more energy so let's analyze what the percussion is doing and see if we can emulate that on brass the percussion goes something like this one simple note, followed by a complex rhythm. One simple note again, followed by the compressed rhythm. So we have that, you know, call and response. So I think it would be cool in the brass to do something similar. Maybe we play one simple note followed by the entire chord. So we get something like this. Now it's a bit more energetic. I'm doing marcato notes and not sustained notes. The articulation you use changes the impact of what you're writing. This is fine, but it still doesn't sound as huge as I want it to be. We need more articulations. I think it would be nice if those marcato notes were accompanied by crescendos played by other French horns. So something like this. Crescendo flutter tongues. That would be pretty cool. So if we put those together, we get... I'm still not fully satisfied. I feel that when the percussion kicks in with that I really want to feel the weight of that. And weight is brought by bass. So we're going to try to bring some bass in here by using another brass instrument. This time the one that has some of the darkest tones, the tuba. And we're just going to play the B over two of these. Sounds so freaking dark. And when you layer it together with the bass trombone, you get... And here's the final secret sauce. One thing you'll see professional composers do a lot is actually use several different libraries of the same kind to do the same thing. And the reason is this. So the library I've been using thus far in the brass has been Metropolis Arc 1, which I like. What I want now from this bass is for it to bite back like a rabid dog. So I need a library or a sound of brass that has a crazy attack and sharp sound, aggressive sound in the way it was recorded. One thing I could do is take what I have and process it with plugins like OTT, crazy compression and all that stuff. But what's even better if, is if you can actually add another library that has a different sound. You remember when you watched the Power Rangers as a kid, you had, every Power Ranger had its own like robot. You have the robot tiger, robot dinosaur and all the stuff. They got to their utmost potential when they all merged together because each single Power Ranger robot had something to give to the collective, which was different. So Metropolis Arc 1, in this case, is like the dinosaur. It's the foundation. Uh, and it's big and it's bold, but it doesn't bite as much as a tiger. On the other hand, we have Metropolis Arc 3, which bites like hell. There's a low brass patch in Arc 3 that has some decrescendos and crescendos that sound like this. <laughs> Which, you know, they're very short and concise, but they're so sharp and so aggressive. So to recap, we started from this French horn, right? But now that we layered it to oblivion and with different articulation, we get this. Wow. 
way more energy. Why? Well, because we just layered it on multiple instruments. We used marcatos and crescendos to bring the energy back. And then we have some extra layers from other libraries that bring the bytes. So not only we have the weight of Metropolis Arc 1, we have the bite of Metropolis Arc 3. And now when we put all that together with the other instruments in the orchestration, we get this. Like you really feel when that percussion kicks in with the ta 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 you hear the brass going like in the background and it really brings a lot of warmth. Obviously every single other instrument family in this bit is going freaking crazy and the whole point is when you compose orchestral music you really have to think that music is like an onion and you can take out layer by layer and there's always gonna be more and you're gonna cry for every single layer you have to work on but it's worth it because it makes it so freaking strong in terms of taste, like an onion. Now, the tricky thing is that I just explained to you about 10 seconds in a four minute long track. And for these 10 seconds, we only talked about the brass very briefly. I didn't mention anything about the strings, the piano, the glockenspiel, the choir, the solo violins, the woodwinds, the percussion, the mixing and the mastering and the composition itself. There's so much that went into this whole project that if I had to explain all that went into it, it would be like a six hour long tutorial and that still would not be enough. Learning orchestral music is not easy. Each one of these details, figuring it out takes so many years and anyone can do it, but it's a long freaking journey and it's full of hurdles. Figure out this stuff is not easy. And that's why I'm so glad that websites like Evanant exist. Evanant is the sponsor of this video. And right now they just announced their new composer accelerator program. It's an eight weeks intensive program about music composition that is going to help you with live sessions with Arn himself. Arn is one of the founders of Evanant, incredible composer for games. He worked on triple A movies, worked on loads of trailers, but not only that, he's also a very good teacher. Nar is the guy who wrote the cinematic music courses that I talked about in the past many times over on this channel. And with this program, you're going to have access to him. There's going to be some live Q&As you can do with him and ask him any type of question. And each week of this program is going to be narrowed down on one specific aspect of composition itself. And by the end of it, it should be much faster, better. And this ideally will propel you forward in your composing career. I've studied on Evan and courses in the past. They really freaking helped me. The other thing is that this accelerator program, again, limited to 300 people, it might run out just like this because the value you get is crazy. It also has some bonus content. Like they will give you access to a few courses for free. And also it gives you access to some exclusive sample libraries designed by Arne himself and Joshua Crispin. Joshua being one of the most prolific trailer composers and sound designers of our time. So you get a lot of stuff for free with this program if you sign up to it and also you get eight weeks of being part of a community of 300 driven people followed by an insanely good leader that is going to teach them so much so if i were you if you're interested in this stuff i would check out their website you're gonna find the link to it in the description of this video and uh, i'll see you in the next one bye